Hello guys and gals, and my fellow Vedsies, welcome to day 3 of Veds 2017. As you saw in the little title sequence, today I am giving a very quick commentary slash update to my kind of infamous, but not really, Frozen review. Now, this review is actually one of my favorites, or I guess the part one to the review, is one of my favorite videos that I've ever done, for reasons I'll get into throughout the video. I think the editing was is some of my best. While the sound quality maybe isn't as good as it could be, it's sort of what I had to deal with and work with at the time. But again, I think it does work. Now, this whole little snafu that I'm pulling here about reviewing Frozen Fever instead of Frozen is kind of a way just to segue into this uh, sort of cameo, which I'll get into in a minute. But... Frozen is a thing that I have talked about even from the earliest days of my channel, even going back to Annie Abomination, which is a show that I used to do. You shouldn't watch that, by the way. It's, it's pretty terrible. But uh, I always knew that I wanted to review Frozen, and honestly, I'm kind of glad that I did wait, because again, I think my skills at this point were kind of at their peak. Now, this cameo here, I am forever grateful this is File91E, who, for the longest time on his channel, did a File91E Disney News and Review Show, where he would talk about Disney, Disney news and Disney theme park news, and review things that are related to Disney, mostly related to the theme parks. Sadly, he is no longer doing this show, so I'm really eternally grateful that I got this cameo from him when I did. And that I just want to say, that little bit where... I'm sort of not acknowledging what Frozen is, and he, he holds up the DVD, and then it cuts back to me, and it cuts back to him, and he sort of chucks it. The That was all him. When I watched the raw file that he gave me, he he's the one who held up the Frozen Blu-ray, and then I don't even know if when he quote-unquote chucks it out the window, if he intended that to be a bit, or if he was just putting it away between shots and just sort of holding his face. But when I was looking at the raw footage, I'm like, I could make a joke out of this, which is why when he holds it up, there's a ding. And then when it comes back to him, there's like a, a few seconds with nothing there, and then he just sort of chucks in and the window cracks. I always, that's one of my favorite. I had so much fun just editing that bit alone. Now, these little uh, interstitials talking about various parts... I still use these, because they are, again, some of the best things I think I've edited. And I think it flows extremely well with the music. In fact, you'll probably see those further on down the line throughout VEDs. Now, getting back to the review itself. This was part one. There was always intended to be a part two. In fact, uh, at the end of the video, you'll see... Uh, I had, I, I think I had intended it to be released the day, the week after. Like, it was going to be a week between parts. If I want to say part one, or part two, rather, being released the, uh, on Christmas Day, or around that time. It's been a few years since that, uh, since that point, and part two hasn't come out, so I just want to explain. There will probably never be a part two. This review will probably never be finished. Thankfully, though, I pretty much do say all of my pieces about the film, all of my gripes about the film, in this first part. I probably should rename it to just, you know, a Frozen Review or Frozen My Thoughts, but, uh, but yeah, so I just want to put that out there. I've I've tried for the longest time to get a part two out, even going as far as I think last year for Veds, I was going to put out a bit where it would it would be part two. That would be the first video for Veds, and it would be my character in a courtroom scenario with the judge saying, "You took two years to release this episode, and because of that, you now have to release." Uh, so many, you know, like 29 more videos, and it, that was going to be like sort of the introduction to VEDs. I didn't end up going with that, uh, primarily because I could never get the review finished. But, uh, yeah. Another thing I do want to point out is for people who have watched some videos of mine, this version of the background, the blue uh, tiles, I actually did sort of make it Frozen-esque with the snow falling and, uh, 
and sort of the frost around the, the, the sides. This I like, too, where whenever I talk about something retro, and I did this for a while, it would sort of go into sort of like a psychedelic 60s motif. And, and yeah, I completely, I still stand by this. Disney in the past have, has done parenting properly. Like in The Lion King, when Simba basically endangers himself and Nala, and to a certain extent Zazu, by going to the elephant graveyard, and Mufasa's like, no, you could have gotten yourself killed. We are not just going to go Hakuna Matata and, you know, and call it a day. They do this. Why they don't do that in Frozen, I don't really understand. And it's one of those things where the parenting really bugs me. I understand, well, if the parents did do that, we wouldn't have a movie. But come on, man. Do something else. Do something like what The Lion King did. Something that makes it work. Now, coming up here, we are going to have a spoiler alert. I put this in primarily because I didn't want people in the comments yelling at me, Oh, you spoiled the movie! When I would pretty much reply, Why are you watching a review of a movie that would explain the twist? I, I don't know. People on YouTube be cray-cray. And I hate the fact that I just said that. But, uh, you know, moving on. The idea of... Hans being the villain is not a bad idea if they had set it up properly. As I explained in the review, if maybe they had a few lines of him just alone, maybe talking to the Duke, where there is sort of a underlying theme here, kind of like the Prospector in Toy Story 2, which I get into in a few minutes, where... If you watch it back a second time, you can tell that the prospector is being kind of manipulative in some of the things that he says and how he handles certain situations and ties, tries to sort of fan the flames. They don't really do that. They, he genuinely seems like a good guy, and then they, they just sort of pull this switch, and I, I'm sorry, I, I don't buy it. Uh, now, coming up here, we have a M. Night Shyamalan bit. Originally, I think I was just going to play the uh, Robot Chicken What a Twist clip, but uh, I think I came up with the idea, well, let's just do like a little skit where he's reading the script and he just he wants to add a twist. So, again, this is one of the reasons why I, I, I like this review quite a bit. It holds a special place in my heart because I think I just had a lot of creative juice going into this, which is partly why I think it's taken me so long to do a second part and why I don't think there will be a second part is because I don't think I can top it. I don't think there's any real jokes that I could do that could top anything that really happens here. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe someday I will release a second part, but as I've said multiple times throughout this video, just don't expect it. I'm done trying to act like... I'm going to release a second part, because deep down I know I'm probably never going to get around to it. One other thing I will sort of point out as we're going along here is this is one of the few reviews where a prototype for the new version of uh, my character, my sort of caricature of myself, comes in, where the mouth closes, or if... I'm questioning something, there's a question mark above my head. Or if I'm surprised about something, an exclamation mark uh, goes above my head. Uh, this was one of the first videos on my channel really to experiment with that idea. Now, the only difference is is that it doesn't... because First off, because the eyes are just black, which I could get into why they are like that. Basically, if you know of the Jim Henson Muppet... Uh, that they would use on, like, the Muppet show or some of the Muppet movies or basically any Muppet projects that require, like, a, a jug band. There's usually, like, a Jim Henson Muppet there. That was sort of the look that I was going for. And coming into this VEDS, I sort of realized that I want to be a bit more expressive, as you saw in the in the first video. So I retired him. But again, those ideas of sort of making him expressive have their roots into this project. So... I just wanted to sort of uh, gloss about that. Uh, so quickly talking about some of the things that were going on in the review here. I go into Olaf the Snowman, and I'm sorry, I don't get why he's appealing. I don't. And in fact, one of the funniest things 
is if you watch any recent videos of the Frozen the sing along that they have where the old American Idol experience used to be at uh, at Disney's Hollywood Studios uh when they do the song in the summer when he says uh uh, winter's a good time to stay in and cuddle, but put me in summer and I'll be a... And the joke is, he looks at a puddle. People in the audience now, I think it's almost every show now, probably, people will yell out puddle. And what's funny is there's one guy who is one of the narrators, I guess, who will basically overreact and be like, what is wrong with you? You know, get him, throw him out of here, throw him out of here, catch me outside, how about that? Uh... So, yeah, watch those videos, because that, that's just hilarious. Uh, one other thing I will point out here, this is actually one of the only videos, again, on the channel that actually has a sort of end card, where I link to both my channel, a, you know, have a subscribe button, and I also link to File91E's channel. Uh, again, there are a lot of things in here. This is very much an experimental video, I, I, I feel like. And I feel like I'm at a place now where I can do this stuff, and I think I'm very confident. So yeah, that's that that's really it for this commentary, guys. I don't I don't know if I'm going over at this point. Editing me will you know, probably put a text here saying that I'm either over or under. And uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this little commentary slash update to the whole Frozen review situation. Hope it was some ways insightful. And, uh, yeah, uh, until tomorrow on day four, guys, gals, and fellow Vedsies, I will see you tomorrow.